You are watching the New American Media. You are listening to the Unhappy Hour Sports Radio Show on the New American Media.com. And we are back with Zach Barris. Zach is a lifelong Cleveland sports fan. He is an NBA scout. He is a fan of all things sporting. And you can find him at Z Barris. That's B A R I S over on Twitter. Zach, you went over to the NBA draft combine. You went over to go see all of these players. And the draft is getting real close now. It's getting real close. I know we've done our mock drafts before, and I'm starting to hear Andre Drummond linked with the Cavs, and I know that he's the linchpin in your worry meter. Um, the guy could be boom or bust. Let's kind of let's start with Andre Drummond, and then we'll try to see how the top five might be panning out in your opinion. Andre Drummond is the wild card in this draft, in my opinion. He is the biggest boom or bust prospect in this draft. I mean, Anthony Davis is... Like I said, no matter what, he is going to be at least a star defensive player in this league for years to come, even if his offensive game never develops properly, even though I think it will. But getting back to Andre Drummond, this is a guy coming out of high school who was one of the top two to three recruits in America, depending on which, you know, depending on which boards you looked at. Um, he's a, you know, he was a fantastic player in high school, but the problem is his motor isn't always there. You know, he has some big games, but there are some things that worry me. You know, he's a 28% shooter from free throw land. And when you pair that with Tristan Thompson, who shoots 45%, your front court would be abysmal at shooting free throws, which is, is, you know, the number one thing that worries me. But if the Cavaliers feel that he can work well with Kyrie Irving, it'd be a good fit if he can work well with him. Now, I'm not saying Andre Drummond is going to be a superstar, but he could be the next Kwame Brown, or he could be the next Amari. If he's the next Amari Stoudemire and the Cavaliers feel that way, and their brass looks at him and that's what they determine, then they need to draft him there because that would be the highest potential in the draft. Now you behind, would, behind Anthony Davis. You wouldn't see it that way, though. As a scout, you would you, just like you said, it's such a teeter-totter. It's either one extreme or the other, kind of like Ryan Leaf, Peyton Manning. You could see it being fantastic for a decade or just a train wreck. And you're saying yeah, at I mean, number four you might want well, to pick something you're safer. passing over at, at, number, at number four. You know, we, we, the Cavaliers could be passing on the next great defensive wing in the draft. You know, in Michael Kidd Gilchrist, you know, he was not a great scorer at this point of his career, but he's fantastic around the rim. You know, he, he'll put everything back, you know, and he's good, and he can develop a jump shot over time. I feel he can honestly develop, you know, he's very raw offensively, but his defensive skills would bring something to the Cavs that we, that, that we lacked under the last two seasons under Byron Scott, which would definitely be necessary in the Cavaliers, you know, in the, in the Cavaliers' Okay, you know, let, let me let, let me jump in there for a second. You're talking about Byron Scott. Let me let me bring it back. I know I'm trying to move past the LeBron thing, but I did have this question, and you just reminded me of it. How much credit do you give to Mike Brown coming from San Antonio for for helping LeBron become the defensive master that he is? The, 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 I'll split them up into separate questions. What do you think about that? It's, it's really hard to tell because. I mean, LeBron, like I said, is just a fantastic all-around player. You knew that when he came in the league. He was a good defender anyways. You know, he was a good offensive player. He just needed to develop, and he keeps getting a little better on each side of the ball every year. I think the Cavaliers under Mike Brown had a good defensive scheme, but the offense never seemed to ever – you know, the offense always seemed to be in disarray. It never seemed to be a complete offensive system. The ball, all, all the offense was give the ball to LeBron at the top of the key, let him make plays. And see what he does. So and I think – I think well, well, there were coaches that would have been a much better fit for the Cavs. I mean, there, there have been rumors you know, circulating around that, you know, that Brian Winters came up with a couple weeks ago saying that the Cavaliers fired Mike Brown after winning 66 games and losing to the Orlando Magic. You know, LeBron would have considered staying. You know, you, you know that apparently that may have been his tipping off point was that, you know, he, wasn't, he did not like Mike Brown. And, you know, but if you look what Mike Brown did last year with the Lakers, the Lakers went from being a really bad defensive team last year they're being a pretty solid defensive team. They're one of the top in the league. Um, and I, I think, I think he, he did an okay job over here, but the Lakers, you know, it's really hard to determine with a coach. You know, the Lakers were not the same team they were a year ago or two years ago. You know, they didn't have Lamar Odom this year. You know, Derek Fisher obviously wasn't as good. You know, everybody was playing a level below what they used to play. You know, because, you know, the Lakers are an older team and they lacked a the bench until, until they got – you know, Ramon Sessions and Jordan Hill. I think that made them a lot more complete. But I think Mike Brown did a good job with the Lakers this year. But it's so hard to determine if he developed LeBron James defensively or not. You know, LeBron worked real – he was real close with Chris Gent. 
you know, and a couple other of the Cavs assistants. But it's it's just too hard to tell whether he was, you know, whether Mike Brown developed him defensively or not. And do you think, Zach, that if that if the Cleveland Cavaliers had this year's LeBron James, that they could have pulled out some of those against Orlando, against the the, the Celtics, or I mean, is it just ridiculous to even think that? I, I get I get that in one hand it's ridiculous because it was it was also it's also the fact that Boston this year was not the same team they were three years ago, not even two close. three years ago. No. You know, Paul Pierce does not have the ability. When LeBron put up 44 in that game, when we lost to them in Game 7 right. in 2008, you know, that was LeBron James putting up 44. Paul Pierce was able to match him point for point almost the entire game. You know, Pierce, I believe, put up 40 in that game. Ray Allen was, you know, Ray Allen did not have an ankle injury at the time. He was still a star player, and so was Kevin Garnett. You know, Rajon Rondo wasn't as good, but their bench, you know, they had James Posey, Kendrick Perkins. It was P.J. Brown. That team was just a – that was a 66-wing team or 65-wing team the year that – you know, the year they beat the Cavs in seven games. LeBron played lights out in that series. The Cavaliers just didn't have it, you know. It was – you know, he was fantastic that whole series. I'm not talking about the series, you know, that he supposedly quit on, you know, two years ago. I'm talking about the series in 08 when Boston won the title. You know, it's just too hard to go back and think, you know. That's the thing is Paul Pierce – you know, Boston was barely 500 for most of this year until the end of the year. Right. And – it's really hard to determine because I think Boston in no means, you know, it shocked me that they were even, it's, uh, it shocked me that they almost beat Atlanta to get out of the first round. And then, you know, watching them struggle with Philly, I was like, this series is going four games. You know, I looked at it and there's no way Boston even swipes a game. You know, and it, it just, it was like shocking to even watch LeBron struggle with Boston again this year until the last two games and then he completely took over. And it's just, it's too hard to look back on and see. You know, the Cavaliers did have talent around LeBron. I'm still shocked they lost to Boston a few years ago. Uh, I do think I do think that was the year the Cavs, that was their chance to win it all because the East was a little bit weaker than it had been. They were able to stop Dwight Howard. And, you know, I, and I think they were a really, really good matchup with the Lakers. I think they matched up really well with the Lakers. They didn't struggle with them. And I, I literally, I just, the Cavaliers, that was their year to win it. They didn't win. LeBron left for Miami. But if you put LeBron on last year's team, and it would have been basically the same team, that team had tons of injuries. I don't know if they would have won more than 52 games last year. You know, and then this year, who knows what would have happened. You can only speculate. But I just don't even want to get into that because you're like, oh, would they still have Mo Williams? Would they have Baron Davis? Would they have Ky- had Kyrie Irving? You know, would they have still made that trade and gotten Kyrie Irving? You yeah, know, I mean, pick? it all gets wacky. You know, it's, it's just the kind of that that LeBron had to go through. Like when w- Brian Windhorst said, I caught him on ESPN, and, and I loved that he said, um, I, I, I liked hearing that he said LeBron blamed his Cavalier teammates for, for the loss when he ripped off his jersey and left Cleveland, then made the decision, came down and said, this is going to be easy. And after the loss to the Mavericks, he had to look in the mirror and realize – Okay, this is on me. I need to do better. And he got a lot better. In, you know, instead of hoisting those yeah. long-range, mid-range jump shots, he's driving to the basket, he's hitting his free throws, his head's in the game, he's focused. That's what he wasn't in Cleveland. And it's just so frustrating to be the minor league team to the Yankees. I, I, well, you know, I, think, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't realized, like when I the think, mid-market teams him, give their superstars yeah, away I'm, so they can get great L other places, you know? I honestly think it took him a year to realize. I mean, I don't know if he would have ever gotten over that hump in Cleveland because he could have always kept blaming his teammates. And last year, he might not have. playing with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh going, you know, if I can't win with these guys, so it's got to be my fault. You know, he played second fiddle to, to Dwayne Wade last year all year. This year, it was, you know, everybody's calling LeBron always, you know, Dwayne Wade is Batman, LeBron's Robin. You know, LeBron is not Scottie Pippen. He showed that this year. He's the Michael Jordan, the Dwayne Wade is the Scottie Pippen of that team. He is. You know, LeBron showed that he's. They would not have even gotten close to a title without LeBron this series. He was fantastic. It was, it was one of the he had best, one of the best final ever series ever. You know, and I think he's matured and he showed that now that he can handle it. You know, he goes. You know, he needs the ball in his hands now. You know, he can't sit back in the uh, in the perimeter. You know, in the corner and just let the offense. You know, go through Dwayne Wade without him touching the ball. But it you also know? it I mean, also looks like such a violent way for Bosh who got hurt. For Wade, who got hurt, for James, whose legs were cramping up, I'm watching this team realizing they're 30 years old now. Going, you know, I don't know how long these guys can play because it's a violent way of playing. Kevin Durant's more of, you know, it's more finesse. It's a more, shooter, yeah. yeah, like you could see a career lasting a long time. But there's a lot of brutal, 
banging and shoulder dropping and, and a lot of collisions and falling and tearing obliques and hurting your knee and hurting your thighs. And well, look at Dwayne Wade. He's injured almost yeah. every year. And you have to take a look at that. Is That's why I can't guarantee a heat championship because, you know, Chris Bosh, you know, if, those guys, if Dwayne Wade wasn't an injury risk, I would put them as the front runners for next year too. I would say there's no one, no team that can beat them right now. You know, especially with Derrick Rose being injured. You know, who knows what's going to happen with San Antonio this year, aging a little bit. You know, in Oklahoma City, they weren't ready last year. Maybe they'll be ready next year. I, I think some things need to change in Oklahoma City for them to win. I think they need a better back. You know, I think Fisher did a nice job, but it'd be really nice if they could bring in Andre Miller to slow down the offense when Russell Westbrook's out of the game. To give the ball to Durant more. I think they need a better. You know. Better backup point guard, Eric Maynard, was out for the entire year after tearing his ACL at the beginning. I think that was a big loss that a lot of people didn't talk about. And, you know, there's just so many things that go into it. But I think Miami right now has to be the front, the, you know, has to be the front runner for the title next year. You know, they still have the mid-level exception available in free agency. And if they sign Steve Nash, which is a possibility, I'm not saying it's strong, but there is that possibility. If they go out and sign Steve Nash... I don't see Miami losing the next two titles. I just don't even see it being possible. You know, it's always it's always possible at the mid level for them to have that. So it's definitely going to be there's definitely some big question marks. But it really depends what happens this off season. It depends if the Chicago Bulls go out and get Steve Nash. You know, they're now in talks. You know, I'm not saying they're in talks, but you know, it has to be a rumor that Dwight Howard could be shipped off to Chicago. You know, because it's a better fit than New Jersey. I mean, than the Brooklyn Nets. You know. Chicago has Joe Kinoa to offer, you know, there's Carlos Boozer just because of the salary, it makes sense, but there's Taj Gibson. You have a lot of players on the Chicago Bulls right now that would make sense and would be a good fit in Orlando in a Dwight Howard trade. So Chicago could become the front runners next year. It just depends. You know, you can't determine a winner this early in the season in the offseason going, oh, they'll win the next two titles. It drives me nuts when people try to predict the next two titles or the next title by a team, considering they haven't seen what happened in free agency. I mean, for all we know, you know, LeBron could be in a biking accident in the offseason on a bike ride and, you know, tear his ACL. You never know. Crazier stuff has happened in the past. Look at Kellen Winslow. You know? <laughs> Motorcycles. Hooray. I'm saying, you know, accidents happen. People, Ben Roethlisberger, you know, Motorcycle. suffered a motor, motorcycle crash. And, you know, Pittsburgh won going, I believe, from Super Bowl champs to a 7-19 the next season. You know? Wow. It is what it is. Stuff happens. You, you know, at the beginning of the next season, I can predict who's going to win. But right now, I think... Looking at it, Miami has the strongest team, and especially, like I said, with the way LeBron played, if he's going to play like that, I don't know if there's anybody that can beat him. In the NBA, there aren't that many strong teams right now. But if, if Dwight Howard goes to a team, you know, if Dwight Howard winds up in Dallas with Darren Williams and Dirk Nowitzki, that's going to be a hard team to stop, too. I, I really think there, there's a, it just depends on what, what happens this offseason. It's going to be really really interesting to see what happens well i'll tell you what the N nba draft is on its way and when we come back we're going to talk with cleveland sports fan and nba scout zach barris and we're going to discuss who is going where in the latest mock draft a unofficial mock draft kind of looking at this as we get very close to all of the lousy teams improving and maybe we can find out how soon the Cavs can compete not just be on the outside looking in, but actually rebuild your base and start expanding and making a move to compete in the league. So we're going to take this quick commercial break. My name is Brian. You're listening to The Unhappy Hour on the NewAmericanMedia.com. And if by the way you are listening to this after the fact on YouTube, thank you because we have, I don't know, hundreds of people subscribing and almost 20,000 video views. And we've only recently started launching our stuff on YouTube. So thanks for the support. Please click subscribe and follow Zach on Twitter at... Z Barris, Z B A R I S, and we are at American underscore media underscore. We'll be right back in just a second to talk some more NBA draft. Follow the new American Media dot com on Twitter at American underscore media underscore. This is the new American Media. Agree to disagree. Yeah, it's a radio show we have on thenewamericanmedia.com every single Friday at 4.30 p.m. Pacific. Join the show. What do we talk about? Politics, religion, and spirituality. Basically anything you're not supposed to talk about in a bar. <laughs> you're not supposed to have these conversations inside of a bar, but we have them every single Friday at 4.30 p.m. Pacific on thenewamericanmedia.com. Join the show, offer your opinion, and let's agree to disagree, but let's have a good conversation. Have you ever considered adopting a pet to be part of your family? 
Our animal companions can be just as close to us as our human companions. If you're considering adoption, please visit your local shelter and adopt a pet today. Shelter pets make the best pets. Hi, Brian from the NewAmericanMedia.com. Last year I had this idea. I wanted to start a website of my own. Not just something, a presence on Twitter, a presence on Facebook, and have a thing. I wanted a website. I wanted a home base for all of the ideas and things I'm interested in. I wanted live radio. I wanted to communicate with the globe. I was tired of being spoon-fed dogma by corporate interests and, and just, here, believe this, believe this. I said, no, I, I think there's something underneath the surface, but I didn't know how to do it. So I contacted Ted Distel of distaldesign.com. Ted walked us through the process of, okay, you want videos, you want to do quotes of the day, you want to have a spiritual section, you want to have a 1984 watch where, where government's intru intruding and private corporations are intruding into your privacy. Yeah. Yeah, those are the things that I was interested in. Ted walked me through the process. We built thenewamericanmedia.com, and I encourage you to go online and take a look at our site. That's what he's capable of. Please, if you have an idea, go to distaldesign.com. That's D-I-S-T-E-L design.com. T-N-A-M radio, because the news always matters. Hi, Brian from thenewamericanmedia.com. You know, this housing crisis that we've been in for a few years now has really taken a toll on a lot of families. I know somebody you've worked with, somebody that's, that you're related to, maybe even yourself. You might have gone through some sort of foreclosure, short sale, deed in lieu of foreclosure, or any other nonsense going on in the financial markets tied to housing. One of the things that is not talked about enough is the fact that a lot of people have to get rid of their homes right now and go into some sort of apartment style living. And in that situation, many people can't bring their cat or dog, their friend, their companion, a member of their family. Imagine your dog, imagine your cat dropped off at a shelter. Oh, it's a shelter. They'll be safe. No, the shelters just don't have the resources capable to take care of these animals, and thousands of them are put to death every single week. Please, if you have the opportunity, go become a foster parent at, at a shelter. Go to your local shelter, adopt a dog or cat. Trust me, a family out there is going to really appreciate the effort. If you're tired of the other stuff, take a look at thenewamericanmedia.com. Be sure that you go on to Facebook.com and do a quick search for The New American Media and like our page because we like it when you do that.